Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about simultaneous equations and I suppose the first thing to be aware of with simultaneous equations is we are generally trying to find two unknown values and um, let's say for example an x and a y value and to find these values we need two equations and these two equations are known as simultaneous equations because they are two equations which are both true at the same time. Now, that seat might seem a little bit abstract, but I suppose the main way to think about it, in my opinion, is looking at it on a graph, first of all. So there's a few different ways of solving simultaneous equations. The first one would be graphically. And if you look to the graph on the right-hand side, we have two equations represented here. We have the purple line, which is y equals to x plus 1. And we have our other line, which is our green line, which is x plus y equals to 3. So in both these examples, you can see, or both of these graphs or lines, you can see that they're straight line graphs, and we've got an x and a y unknown values. Now, the way to solve them graphically is all you need to do is to look and see where the two lines cross over. So if you look to our diagram, we can see that our two lines intersect at this point here, which I'm just shading in in red, and if we look at the coordinates of that point, it's the point, so one across and two up. So it's they intersect at the point one, two. And therefore, if we think about what our coordinates represent, we know we've got an x value and a y value. So that means that x is equals to one and y is equals to two. And that is the solution to those simultaneous equations, that at the point x equals to one and y equals to two, these two lines are both, the x and the y value are equals to each other. So as I said already, the first way to solve simultaneous equations is to use a graph. Now, I suppose the one disadvantage with doing it graphically is it will take a little bit of time to actually draw out your x and your y axis to plot points. So although this is a nice method, unless we already have the graphs drawn, sometimes it takes a little bit too long. So we're now going to look at a few other ways of solving these simultaneous equations. So the first method that we're going to look at is what we call the elimination method. And this one, in my opinion, is probably the easiest one. And we're going to go through a couple of examples with this. Um, and this is probably the one that you'll see you use most in class. But just remember that this is the same as graphing it and finding the points of intersection. However, we don't need a graph to be able to do it. So here's our first question. So with the elimination method, what you are trying to do is you're trying to eliminate either the x or the y. You need to look at your two lines, first of all, and ask yourself, which one is easier to get rid of? And the way that we get rid of it is we add the columns together of the two lines. So what I mean by that is, if we imagine this like we do like an addition sum, let's pretend we had something like plus two minus two. And if we added those two together, it would obviously give me zero. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of either the x's or the y's by adding them together. And the way that you can get rid of the letters if that is that if one is a plus and one is a minus and they both have the same value in front of them. So looking at these two lines straight away, I'm thinking, well, one's a minus y and one's a plus y. So if I added those two together, they would cancel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add these two lines together. My y's are going to cancel. Then I add together my x's. So x plus 2x gives me 3x and minus three plus six gives me three. I then need to get my x by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by three, so therefore x is equals to one. Next, we need to find my y value. So I found my x value, but I still have to find my y value. So we go back and we substitute our new x value into either one of our lines. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'm gonna to go to the first one we had, which was x minus y equals to minus three. I substitute one in there. I then say to myself, I want the y by itself, so I need to get rid of the one. So I minus one from both sides. That gives me what minus y is equals to minus 4. So therefore, y is equals to 4. And there are my answers. So if you think about this as a coordinate, that's basically where these two lines intersect 
they meet at the point 1, 4 on my graph. However, we didn't need to draw it on a graph to find the answer. So guys, this is the same lines as I did in the previous example. I'm just going to show you a different method of doing the same thing. And this method is called the substitution method. Now for the remainder of this video, I'm going to be dealing with the elimination method. But the substitution method can be used as well. I just find the elimination method is better. But I'm going to show you the substitution method. And if you prefer it, you could obviously use it. Um, instead of the elimination method. So just to show you how the substitution method works, basically what we do is we have to get one of the letters by themselves in both of our lines and then we let them equals to each other. So basically we need to either pick the X or the Y that we're going to select to be by itself. So in this one, let's go with the Y. So we basically want to get the Y by itself on the left hand side in both of these lines and then we're going to let them equals to each other. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the X here. So I'm going to minus X from both sides. So that's going to give me minus Y is equals to minus 3 minus X. And then I also want to get rid of that minus in front of the y. So I'm going to multiply everything by minus 1. So on the left and the right hand sides, therefore y is equals to 3 plus x. So I've got y by itself. I need to get y by itself on the right hand uh, line as well. So I'm going to minus 2x from both sides. So therefore y is equals to 6 minus 2x. So now I have both lines in terms of y so y is it by itself on the left hand side and now I let them equals to each other because if they're both equals to y then they both must be equals to each other so I do 3 plus x is equals to 6 minus 2x and now I just need to solve this like uh, an equation so I'm trying to get the x's to one side and the numbers to the other side so I'm going to minus x from both sides first of all so that's going to give me on the left hand side left with 3, the right hand side 6, minus 2x minus x gives me minus 3x. So therefore I need to get rid of that plus 6 on the right hand side. So I'm going to minus 6 from both sides. So that's going to give me minus 3x on the right side and minus 3 on the left hand side. Then I need to get rid of the minus 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by minus 3. So therefore x is equals to minus 3 divided by minus 3 is 1. And again, like we did in the last one, I need to substitute in the number 1 now for x to get the value of y. So I can go back up to my first line um, and I can say y equals to 3 plus x. So therefore y is equals to 3 plus 1, so y is equals to 4. And if you look back to the last example I did, you'll see that I also got the answer x equals to 1 and y equals to 4. So that's kind of like the other way of solving sim simultaneous equations. As I said, both ways are completely acceptable and um, it's up to you which one you prefer. Um, for the rest of this video, I'm going to do more examples with the elimination method, but by all means, you could use the substitution method as well. Okay, guys, so here's another simultaneous equation. The reason why, again, it's simultaneous is because we have two unknowns and we've got two equations. So we need to solve them to see when they intersect what the value of f and the value of g is. This is the exact same as calling it x and y. Okay, so we're going to use the elimination method. And remember what I said, with the elimination method, we want to get rid of either the f or the g. And the way that we get rid of it is we add them together when one of them is a plus and one of them is a minus and they both have the same value in front of them. Now, I'm looking at my g column and I'm thinking, okay, if I add those together, I'm so close to getting them to cancel out. However, one should be a plus and one should be a minus. So at the moment, they won't cancel out. But that's okay, because we know that if we do something to an equation, once we do it to everything in the equation, it doesn't change the value of the equation. So I'm thinking, if I change the bottom line to a plus g, then they will cancel out. So that's what we're going to do. So we need to ask ourselves, how do I change the, the bottom line from being a minus g into a plus g? And what I have to do is I have to multiply the entire line by minus 1. 
If I multiply that entire line by minus 1, it will change that minus g into a plus g. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to change this. So minus 1 multiplied by minus 4f gives me 4f. Minus g multiplied by minus 1 gives me plus g. And minus 6 multiplied by minus 1 gives me 6. So now I'm going to rewrite out my two lines. So I've got 3f minus g equals to 50, and that's my first line. And my second line, which I've just redone, is 4f plus g equals to 6. And now I'm going to eliminate my g's by adding them together because they're going to cancel and I need to add together the other two columns. So 3f plus 4f gives me 7f. And 15 plus 6 gives me 21. Now I need to get f by itself, so I need to divide both sides by 7. So therefore f is equals to 3. So now I have my value of f, I now need to go and get my value of g. So I know that if f is, g is equals to 3, I just substitute that in. I can pick either one of my lines. I'm going to go with the first one. So 3f minus g equals to 15. So therefore it's going to be 3 bracket 3 minus g is equals to 15. 3 times 3 gives me 9. So I'm trying to get g by itself. So I'm going to minus 9 from both sides. So therefore, minus g is equals to 6. So therefore, g is equals to minus 6. Okay, guys, so I'd like you to have a go at doing this one now. Um, I'm going to solve this in a minute using the elimination method. So that's probably the best one to practice at this point. So if you pause the video, have a go at doing the question and then play the video to see how you got on. Okay, so again, we're trying to eliminate either the x or the y. So we need to make sure that one of our letters has a plus and a minus in front of it and they're both the same value. So straight away we're lucky with this question because if we look to our y column we can see one is a plus and one is a minus and they both have an invisible one in front of them. So let's add the columns together. So these guys are going to cancel out straight away and then we just add the rest. So it's 3x minus x gives me 2x and 7 plus 5 gives me 12. We then want to get x by itself, so we divide both sides by 2, so therefore x is equals to 6. Now we have x, we want to get y, so we need to substitute it back into one of our original equations. I'm going to go with the first one, so 3x plus y equals to 7, so we're going to substitute in 6 there for x. 3 times 6 gives me 18, plus y is equals to 7. So we need to get rid of the 18, so we're going to minus 18 from both sides, therefore y is equals to minus 11.